So a very good afternoon to everyone. Um, and thanks for having me here. Um, yeah, so I am from GovTech, uh, where I do con internal consulting. Uh, we run service design uh, co-creation workshops uh, for internal uh, government agencies that we work with. So today the topic is about making user-centered design your superpower. Yeah. Okay, so first things first is what do we consider user-centered design, right? I think the word design is actually quite uh, heavily used nowadays. So a lot of different uh, connotations, different aspects of uh, design comes in. Um, to us, design um, has a few key components, right? One is about the audience for whom you're designing for. So I think social sector is really one of those where it is very clear, right? Uh, who is your client? Who is your audience? Um, more so than some of the agencies that we work for, which are maybe regulatory in nature. So I think that's very, a uh, very clear understanding of really who is the, the audience and like what um, uh, Bruce shared just now, right? It's about how do you uh, read the minds? How do you actually understand your user better? So first element. Second element is that um, it's actually about understanding the problem before you jump into the solution. So a lot of times um, we see we see a situation and we already have like 10,000 solutions in our mind. But um, in the world of design is that you step back, right? Try and understand, uh, gather enough information, empathize with your user, understand their needs and challenges, reframe, refocus the problem, gather the insights before you jump into solutioning. Um, third point is that um, you will see a lot of this. When it comes to design, there's a lot of brainstorming. There's a lot of working together partnering each other to co-create the best solution. So the people whom you serve could um, a lot of times have a lot of more insights into what would actually make it good for them. What would a good service look like? What would they want the experience to be? So co-creation is something that is uh, uh, you will see a lot of in the design world. Brainstorming, ideation, coming up with lots and lots of uh, possible solutions. And the last part is really about prototyping and testing. This is where we talk about the convergence and divergence. When we diverge is when we look at, oh, okay, there's so many possible solutions, but we converge to prototype. And when we prototype, it is actually to make things uh, tangible, to actually see something very quickly before we decide to continue with it. Yeah. So these are the four key elements, I would say, in um, design. So having gone through that, um, I hope you are thinking through your mind, okay, have I done some of this before, right? Because it's actually, while well, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a concept that's been around for, for quite a while. So I'm just going to do a quick uh, poll, a menti poll. If you can take out your phone and type www.menti.com, uh, 52, 69, 34, and tell us where you are in terms of your um, superpower in this area. Okay, let me share this. Oh, great. Uh, I see two responses. Okay, let's see. Okay, hopefully more of you are getting into Menti. I see 76 participants in all. Yay. Yep, I'm seeing more practitioners coming in. Nice. Yep, so you can see, yeah, it's, it's not something very totally new. Okay, so we've got 18 respondents so far. Give a couple more minutes. Mm -hmm. So most of you are aware of it, heard of it. Okay, uh, would like to understand more, but have not um, done or practice it a lot yet. Okay, we have 30, 31 respondents. I'll wait a little while more. Okay. Yay, now I have two people who are actually already practicing it. Okay. OK, 
Okay, so thanks very much for sharing. I think I get a feel. I think, um, yeah, you've, you've, um, a lot of you have heard of it, would like to understand more, right? And some of you have put it into, into practice already. So a very good um, uh, grouping of people we have here. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to share with you a video of what is service design. What is service design? I've been thinking about this for a while and I recently discovered a brilliant quote by Mark Futine that I think sums it up perfectly. When you have two coffee shops right next to each other, each selling the exact same coffee for the exact same price, service design is the reason you go into one coffee shop and not the other. So let's play that out in a little scenario. Coffee shop A decide they want a mobile app. So they put a team full of people together to work on it for a couple of months before delivering it to their customers. The customers download the app only to find it's got nothing that they need. Now let's look at Coffee Shop B. Coffee Shop B put the customer at the heart of the experience. They talk to them. They do some immersive research and really get to know what the customer's doing before, during and after their coffee. They can map this out on a customer journey where they identify the highs and lows of the experience and uncover some service opportunities and can start to explore solutions. The team then start to speak to other people from around the business. They speak to the colleagues in store and understand what their day looks like. They speak to the founder to look back at the original vision for the coffee shop, as well as the marketing team and the suppliers too. Once they have all of these people together, they can run a workshop or a series of workshops where they can identify the real business objective and exactly what they want to achieve. They can start to design some concepts and test them with the customers they now have a relationship with. They can do a tech analysis and plot everything on a blueprint that documents all of the support systems necessary to bring these concepts to life. With all this, they can create their North Star vision, all resulting in a mobile app full of features the customers love. But it doesn't stop there. They've also identified the colleagues need a tablet application to help them deal with the extra flow of traffic in store and the payment system needs updating so all three can work in harmony. They might design a colleague training and engagement program and redesign their store to optimize the physical experience too, whilst also looking at how they talk about themselves socially, possibly even introducing some new product lines. These are what we call the front stage experiences. But in order for it to all come together, we must look at the backstage too. Here you will find the backend systems that drive all the digital propositions, key metrics that we measure ourselves by, learn from, and iterate upon the services, as well as a CRM system and some delivery partners. So, service design is about three things. One, customer-centric. It's about putting the customer at the heart of everything you do, and only then will you create services people love. Two, co-creation. It's about exploring and designing these concepts together as a result, you will ensure services are both technically feasible and business viable. Three, holistic. It's about building interdependent, interrelated experiences that all connect with people on an emotional level. That way, you will create services that scale beyond the original idea. To round it all off, let's revisit Mark's quote. Service design is not just what makes you walk into one coffee shop and not the other. It's the reason you keep coming back and tell all your friends about it. Okay, so that is um, a quick snippet of what is service design. Um, you're seeing back my screen again, all right? Okay, I guess that's fine. All right, so um, we talked about design just now, the elements of design, and now what I'm sharing is uh, what that, that video showed you was what is service design, right? So service design, why I'm going into service design is uh, as what Tracy shared, right? This is your focus area too, is actually enhancing the service user experience in particular about 
how do you apply human-centered design to improving your services, right? Uh, in fact, this whole area from foundation, intermediate to advanced is about uh, putting the user at the heart of all the things that you do. So as you can see here, um, let me just hide my control. Yeah. So the, the service design actually sees services from a user perspective, right? But not only that, it also looks at it from the, the business perspective. So if you put into the perspective of SSAs, it will be your client as well as what you do to support your client. There's operations, there's things that you do uh, at the backstage. Yeah. So there's uh, the front stage, which, which he talked about. Uh, this is visible to the client and the backstage, which is the things that you do. A lot of things, which could even include capability of your staff. It could be including uh, logistics, um, uh, payment systems, etc. And I mentioned about co-creating, right? So this is about engaging the customers, the service delivery team, so that you can enable really holistic improvements. And all this is rooted in design thinking. So the word design keeps coming up. Um, people are frequently ask, what is the difference between design thinking and service design? So design thinking is more or less like a framework, a methodology. Yeah? And service design is actually the application of design thinking in coming up with uh, services which are user-centric. Yeah? So it brings a creative, innovative, human-centered process to improving your services and design. Okay. So um, in, the, in the public service, actually this has been a movement in the last probably three years or so. Yeah? And it is actually a whole of government movement to redesign processes and services. Um, again, the words user-centric comes up, right? And why do we do this so that we come up with services that are uh, seamless, that are easy to use, that give you a good um, customer experience. Yeah. And uh, this is centered on a couple of things. One is what is it that the, the, the citizen wants to do, right? Let's say if the citizen wants uh, to apply a license with ACRA, okay? But that's really not the job to be done. The job to be done is that he wants to open the business. So what are all the complementary types of services or agencies that he needs to go to in order to get this job done? So it's thinking more from that perspective, putting the user at the heart of it, that we're trying to redesign uh, services in the public sector, okay? Um, as you think through what the user needs to do, then you realize that there are certain challenges, there are certain knots in the whole process, and what do we want to do is actually address them, right? How do we overcome them? What are things that fall through the crack? And not only that we want to think about how to do it, but we want to engage the citizens who is experiencing that service to actually co-create with us. So this sort of sums up the concept of the service journey in the public service. Yeah. And in co-creating with the citizens, you will see uh, the co concepts of what the citizen or business experience, the word front stage, remember from the video, right? What the actions that are needed to fulfill the, the service for the customer? What is the customer experiencing? And at the back, then what are the actions that are needed to support this, to make it happen? Okay. Um, there's also the concept of a role. Remember, all this is about user-centered design. So the user must come in. So that specific role, that person that, that needs to do this thing. Yeah. So what is the jobs to be done by this specific role? Uh, what are the front stage and the backstage processes? And another concept which is important is that where is your start and where's your end point? Yeah, okay. So that helps to, to confine uh, what exactly is the scope of this service journey that you want to do. Okay. Um, another concept is that um, a citizen does not have only one role, right? A citizen could be a parent, um, could be a patient, could be an NS man. So each one of these would have his own service journeys. Yeah. On this part also, um, uh, more from uh, NCSS uh, working with um, with in government agencies, there are also uh, things like, for instance, um, work they've done on the donor service journey, which is with Comchess uh, and uh, GovTech in order to actually provide a great experience for the donor. Yeah, another one is the SG Grants portal, right? In terms of uh, any agency or SSA applying for grant. Yeah, what are some of the considerations? What's important from the experience? of the person who's actually applying for that grant. 
Okay. So I've given you a, a quick update or a, a overview or context setting of what is user-centered uh, design. Also, what are some of the things that um, in the government we are trying to do. So from here, I'm going to talk a bit about yeah, how do you activate or enhance that superpower through sharing a couple of tools. Yeah. So um, in design, these are the type of tools that we actually use to come up with the user-centric design. How do you design good services? If you look at this set of tools, which is really a non-exhaustive list, there are tons of it, yeah? Um, you will notice that some of the things look familiar, right? So actually this user-centered uh, design superpower is not something terribly new. It is something that quite a lot of you already could uh, have. Yeah, you can see things like interviews, uh, uh, ethnographic studies, uh, stakeholder map, I'm pretty sure that um, you probably see something in there that you recognize or have done, right? Uh, business process, engineering, and so on. So for today, um, just over the next probably five, 10 minutes, I'll share these ones, the ones in red, the persona, customer journey map, brainstorming, uh, prototyping. Okay. So let's dive into the first one, yeah? So the term persona, you will hear quite a lot of it in design and a persona is actually a, a representation of a customer of a behavior. It is also that specific role that you want to design for, um, the lens from which that journey is viewed. Okay, And what you want to do with a persona is you want to understand what the persona is doing, what they're thinking, what they're feeling. Yeah, From there, you want to empathize, you want to understand, get into the skin, walk in the shoes of the persona and derive some of the insights what are their pain points? Why are they doing certain things? Why are they not doing certain things? Okay, and come up with opportunities to address the needs of this persona. So this is an example taken from the NCSS Social Innovation Starter Kit. Um, this is something that has been developed by, um, I think NCSS with uh, NUS ISS. Um, I will share the link to it, but I really feel that there's lots of good uh, stuff inside there. So just now I talk about the persona, the thinking, the feeling, right? So uh, what it looks like when you actually document a persona is this, right? So here's Madam Rosma. And what are some of her demographics? What is her level of isolation and her healthcare needs, right? And then there's a little bit of a blurb, blurb on her needs, her pains and challenges and her story, yeah? And there's also some attributes. How tech savvy is she? Uh, how, how resourceful is she? How is she connected socially? So these attributes are things that you could actually pick uh, based on the area or the journey that you are looking at, the service you want to design, you can pick different things. And a quote, right, that talks a little bit about her concerns or what is she like. So this, um, this uh, actually uh, came from uh, this, um, there's a designer song called Design for Impact. Yeah, and this was from last year's Design for Impact. I was uh, uh, I volunteered for that. And this was one of the teams that actually did a, a very good job. And uh, we took their uh, persona into the social sector innovation kit as well. Okay, so that's a persona. And um, if you can think about then, you know, all the likely personas uh, in, the, in the innovation uh, kit, there are templates as well. So templates that uh, help you to actually use it for different situations, different occasions. So that's a, a very good template over there. Yeah. Okay. So in this template, you will see there's the profile for the needs and challenges, the quote, a short story of what the person is going through and what are some of the attributes. Okay. So from the persona, we typically go to something called a customer journey map. Yeah. So a customer journey map Let's look at Madam Rosma again. Yeah, uh, she lives alone. Uh, okay, and uh, what are her needs and her goals? Okay, so she wants to seek help at any time when needed. She wants to stay healthy. Yeah, so in the customer journey map, you will see things like stages. What is happening? What are the actions that she's taking? What are her thoughts and feelings? What are emotions and the pain points and opportunities? Okay. So a filled up template can look some of the, of Madam Rosemar's journey can look like something like this. Yeah. So the stages would be like, okay, there is a major medical episode at night. 
she needs to seek help. Okay, then she gets diagnosed, she gets treated, she gets discharged, and she comes back to the community. And at every stage in there, uh, we document what was it like for her, what are her thoughts and feelings, her emotions. And importantly is that understanding all this, then how can we come up with ways to actually address her needs and goals? Okay, so um, coming out from here, the team actually thought, thought about, okay, how do you uh, have an alert for Madam Rosma because she stays alone, right, and have access to medical help? Okay, so this team actually came up with an opportunity on an innovation called a pillow pal. Yeah, okay, so it's like a, a, a furry toy, but uh, it's a nice pillow. Um, they shared about what do they think this could actually do. Yeah. So this was uh, across a six weeks. It's a designer thon, you know, across six weeks to come up with some ideas. And this is, um, as we said, just come up with lots of ideas, okay, and, and see how that, that idea can take off, or maybe that idea may need a bit more refinement, etc. Yeah. So their idea of a pillow pal was that, okay, the, in good times, they can play music. In times of need, they can actually activate right, certain help. Okay, and you can set up that help uh, through a phone and you can call a, a friend, you can call uh, an ambulance, etc. Yeah, so you can see then from a persona to a customer journey map, you're coming up with the opportunities. Okay, um, the next part is what we call a service blueprint. In service design, a service blueprint is really one of the best tools to actually uh, capture a couple of things, right? Captures who are the people involved? What are the touch points? What are the processes involved and the technology? And importantly, it is actually showing what's happening on the front stage. Yeah, the front stage is where the customers, what they see, what they experience, okay, and they have this pillow pal. But if they were to trigger uh, the help, then what happens at the backstage? Okay, so what happened, what is happening behind the scenes and how operations deliver that experience? So if you think about the work that you do, right, you are maybe seeing a caseworker, um, but behind the scenes, there's just so much more that you need to do. Okay? So of course, there are ways and templates to do this. So the template looks something like this. This is a service blueprint template. And the elements of it are the phases or the stages, what you saw just now, uh, location, where does this interaction occur? What is happening? What is the uh, customer action like? Okay, um, the line of interaction is where um, it is the interaction between the customer as well as the service provider. So the service provider is now in the front stage activities, right? What is happening? Maybe the ambulance is being called, right? And the line of visibility is then that divides between what's happening at the back end that the customer does not see at all. Okay, yeah. And then behind it, there's even more things, like maybe there's a good system, you know, uh, uh, that, that is uh, an appointment system or, or system of source that's actually triggering for the ambulance. Yeah. So in that case of Madam Rosma, you would see, uh, you know, uh, this is the front stage and that's the backstage and you document it in this way. Um, in the social uh, innovation starter kit is a good example of uh, interaction of uh, Madam A as a walk-in case to a family service center. Okay, so these are the uh, phases. She's aware of a need for help, right? Or she's aware of her FSC. She makes initial contact. Okay, she goes for assessment. Yeah, and at every step of the way, we document then what happens, okay, uh, at the front as well as the backstage. So this is another very, very good tool. We use this tool a lot uh, in the work that we do. Okay, so that's a service blueprint. And uh, the last one that I wanted to show is uh, prototyping. Yeah, so, oops, sorry, I think I, yeah, this should be prototyping. And in prototyping, uh, this is when you have an idea and innovation and you want to uh, try it out. You want to come up with a way to make it tangible, right? As you can see here, you can either draw it out, you can storyboard it, you can, it's like a comic strip. You can do a paper prototype. You put a cardboard together. So this one is uh, a cardboard of a mock-up of uh, getting a mask, right? Or changing a trace together token. 
So these are really good ways of learning to think, building to think, right? Build something and then really experience it before you actually uh, spend a lot of money. Yeah. So other ways would be like role play, okay? Uh, have a experiential, uh, spatial prototyping and so on. Yeah. So, so what I've shared are some of the tools um, in terms of um, uh, user-centered design. These are not the only tools, but uh, usually these are the key ones that we actually use in our work a lot and we really like them. Um, as you can see, it's about the user, right? It's about the journey that the user has gone through. It's about what the customer or the client experience, but not only that, it's also the backend, yeah? As well as that, once you've got that, come up with ideas, come up with improvements, enhancements in the service, in the uh, ways of addressing and prototype it. Okay, so uh, that brings me to where can you apply your superpower? Okay, so now that you've heard a little bit about, yeah, what this user-centered design looks like, okay, I'm going to introduce, uh, okay, some of the places. So I'm sure you're already uh, thinking through, right? Um, designing entirely new services, of course, uh, existing, disrupting existing services, there are certain things that are not too good in there. So you want to optimize the user experience. Okay. Um, you want to align it with and, and uh, help to overcome some of the pain points, the bottlenecks that the user's experiencing. Okay. Uh, space, place making activities to improve customer flows, right? This could be spatial flows, right? How do people navigate through certain things? And finally, when you think about all this, digitalization also comes in. Digitalization as in that where in this whole scenario can you apply some uh, digital uh, products, digital um, uh, automation to help that? Okay, so these are all the possibilities of applying uh, service design. Yeah. So with that, I'm going to go to the last tool that I wanted to introduce, which is actually brainstorming or ideation. Yeah. So this is a technique called Crazy 8. Crazy 8 is actually, you fold your paper into eight, right? Into, into uh, yeah, fold it a couple of times until you get it. And then you draw what is it that, the, all the ideas that you have within eight minutes. Okay, so this is something that you can do with your own groups uh, uh, with, with whenever you are doing your own service journey, service design. But for the purpose of today, then um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start that mentee again, right? And then have you type in what are some of the possible ideas where you can apply service design in your area of work in the social sector, okay? So while you are thinking about it, I'm just going to give you some examples, yeah? Um, some examples here, like uh, reducing help-seeking time for working adults with mental wellness challenges. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm also sharing this because uh, the current design for impact tool that is currently happening uh, is the Hackathon Designer Thon. It's actually about addressing mental wellness challenges. So we're talking a lot about, yeah, how do you address some of these uh, challenges? Okay. Um, another one could be, how do you ease the adjustment of a child to a foster home? Okay. And it need not be fancy big things. It could be, how do you onboard your new colleague to a family service center? Okay. So these are all the, the, the possibilities. And um, I'm going to do like just about maybe four minutes and have you share. Uh, so I'm going to go back to mentee. Sorry. Okay. Remember, you, if you're still on this mentee.com, 526934. And I'm going to move to the next one. Okay, so in what way can service design be applied in your area of work in the social sector? So just type something. Um, what are some of the things you can think of and it will appear here. So this is our way of brainstorming and ideation. Just come up with lots and lots and lots of ideas. Okay, so we have about 85 participants. Hopefully um, we get a good one. Oh, nice, how to onboard new beneficiaries. Yeah, volunteer management. Yes. Keep them coming. 
Yeah, because I, I know there are a lot of different uh, SSAs we have here, all are having different ways of doing things, uh, different, different user that you need to, to work with, right? Yeah, think about the challenges that uh, is happening. You know, it's like, oh, if only I could solve this problem. What if I could do this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so service design is not necessarily something very, very innovative. It is also not necessarily about digital transformation. It could just even be applied to, you know, improving a way of doing things, uh, uh, a, a, a service and so on. Connecting with donors, yeah. Nice, good ones. Okay, I'm going to give about a minute and then we shall, yeah, see, so this is brainstorming ideation, the crazy aid in practice. So even as you go back to your own organizations, is you can do something like that, a crazy eight, and then from everyone's, you know, everyone in there will have eight, and then you can pick or prioritize the ones that you actually want to work on. Ticketing experience, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, collaboration is very important. Yeah, how do you collaborate? Because everyone is doing different cases. Okay, how do you share? Uh, your best practices, your good experiences. How do you work in, in uh, really in COVID times? Okay. Self-service platform for volunteers. Hmm? Yeah. How do you uh, have stickiness with volunteers, right? Sometimes volunteers come and then they go. How do you make them continue with you? All right, so uh, voting is closed, right? So thanks very much. You can continue to add them on. I'm sure NCSS uh, will, will also like to see what you have. Okay. Um, okay, before I end, um, let me just share. Give me a minute. To exit the full screen. Okay. So keep them coming, but uh, before I end, um, I just want to share uh, where you can find the resources that I talked about just now. So um, I will have them in the reference for you and uh, uh, in the, in the, that the NCSS can send to you, but um, just wanted to share, right? This social innovation starter kit, lots and lots of good stuff in there, right? What is the journey like? Um, um, how do you, are we ready to do understanding your user, a stakeholder map? Um, just now about Madam Rosemar is also in here, yeah, uh, that customer journey map, okay, and there's a template as well, like a stakeholder map. Um, I also shared in there uh, a, a site called servicedesigntools.org, okay, inside here, you will see lots and lots of tools with lots of templates, okay, for instance, if you want to do a map, right, you are here, you select a map, you select a journey map, Okay, you will see templates. You can download the template. There are even blogs about it. Okay, and the last one is something called This is Service Design Doing. It is a book, a very, very good book. Yeah, but inside there, there are also in the website itself, which is free, you can also find a lot of things like interview guidelines, um, you know, uh, co creation workshops, co creating personas. What does this involve? Right, it gives you really a step by step guide. So these are a few of the resources that we really love and I'm sharing it with you as part of the references. Okay, I think that's all I have. So thanks very much for listening. Okay, let's stop sharing. And with that, I will pass you over to Stanley. <laughs>